Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Ask Caswell. My name's Caswell Cook, and uh, wow, my hair looks terrible. Anyway, we're streaming live tonight on uh, my Facebook page. We're thankful to Westerly Live for also simulcasting the show. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I was trying to avoid the whole birthday thing, but whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I am not 64. Would you knock it off? I'm the reverse of that. I'm 46. And it's okay. Um, so anyway, so we're back with Ask Caswell. We've uh, we've taken a few days off. We've had some wonderful guests uh, over the past uh, three or four weeks since this whole COVID thing happened. I don't even remember how much time has gone by. We were coming at you every single night. And uh, <laughs> Freddie said, who hit the Easter Bunny? Well, the story goes back in the day uh, that that Freddie and Donnie Hindle were little kids and they came over to the uh, cozy corner restaurant where Bob Barber was working uh, in the summer. And he said, did you hear what happened? The Easter bunny was on vacation in Florida and he got hit by a car. And ever since then, Freddie and Donnie have been terrorized, traumatized and very upset by this whole situation. It's just, it's been going on for years. Frederick has some, uh, has some questions. Uh, you go right ahead and you can ask any questions you want. Um, I don't know why I can't get this thing to turn the right way, but whatever. Um, so we've had some great guests on the show, and I want to thank a lot of those people. I especially want to thank our lieutenant governor and former governor Chafee for being guests on the show. Our local folks like our president of our town council and our police chief, they've been on the show. We had uh, Russ from the association. Um, we've had uh, John Ford Coley, John Batdorf. We've had uh, Jonathan Edwards. We've had Terry Sylvester from the Hollies. It's all the people that have played in Meswamakit, uh, unbelievable people that have played down here at the beach. And tonight is no exception. That's my mom saying happy birthday. Thank you, mom, for uh, giving birth to me uh, all those years ago. Um, Frederick Kindle says, I am in counseling still today. Thank you, Kristen, for the happy birthday. Uh, thank you all for the happy birthdays. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, Jackie's watching and uh, Lois is watching and John, Robert, uh, let's see, Mary. Gonzo's on. Hey, Gonzo. Uh, you're going to be in the Musquamica paper soon because uh, we're talking about how we started the drive, the drive-in. Hey, Jay Quellen. Jay Quellen's on. She said happy birthday. My stepfather, John, said happy birthday. Hi, John. Um, so we have a great guest tonight. Uh, it's it, He's an unbelievable guest. Um I got to know him because he's played in Musquamacate not once but twice, and I even got to join Mike Panera on stage and sing, uh, I think I sang My Sharona with one version of the classic rock All-Stars, which was kind of fun. But uh, you know him from uh, Iron Butterfly. You know him as the uh, lead singer of Ride, Captain Ride from Blues Image. He was with Alice Cooper from 1980 to 82. Hey, Christine, thank you for the happy birthday from Massachusetts. Uh, he's an awesome guy, and he's uh, from the sunny California, and he's joining us tonight. So, Ben, I don't know if our guest is here yet. Maybe he is. I don't know. We're, we're, we're live streaming, folks. It's, it's okay. He, is, he was here. He, it's Mike, wave for me. Hello? Huh. All right. Well, um, okay, Mike, I'm going to kick you out. Come right back in. Uh, if you're not on Wi-Fi, get on Wi-Fi. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the test was great with him. He was outside just now. I don't know if that could have done it for him. But um, Thank more, you, more uh, people Mark are Del. saying happy birthday. And let me get out of here. Yeah. Hello, hello. There he can is. you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear you, How are you? Fantastic. Good. Real good. How are you doing, Caswell? I'm doing all right. Long time no see. It's, it's been quite a few years since the Classic Rock All-Stars graced Rhode Island. Yes. Yes. Which, which is something we're going to have to change because uh, we, we've missed our, haven't had our fill of, of Mike Panera music in a long time. So that's why we asked Thank you to come you. on tonight. You got the captain hat on. I got the captain hat there. I don't know if you can see it. Back there is the ocean. Ooh. It's kind of bright. What town? It's kind of hard in? to see, but this is Hermosa Beach, California. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Hermosa yeah. Beach. So, uh, ooh, 
So you want to you want to play us a, play us a song, kick it off with a song. Mike, okay, and we'll talk. All right, great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna be that one, Mike. So, yeah, buddy. <laughs> hey, so so let's let's go back if you if you don't mind. Let's let me let's take our audience back in time. I want to sure. go back to the to the sixties and tell uh -huh. me what what got you playing and what got you started in music. Well, um, I listened to the radio a lot, and my mom and dad had a lot of those old seventy uh, eights, you know, big records, vinyl, and uh, with Chuck Berry doing Johnny Be Good and and uh, all that stuff. And um, so really, I think R&B was my first exposure to the music that I love. And then uh, as time went by, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we had something really great happen. That is, we were living across the street from the Fort Homer Hesley Armory in Tampa. And uh, they started having rock extravaganzas, music extravaganzas there. Uh, Ray Charles, James Brown, Elvis, uh, Bobby Darren, I, you name it. The biggest stars of that time were appearing right across the street from my house. So I used to watch them and right from my kitchen window with my dad and with my mom. And then eventually we got to where we would walk over to the fence, got a little, little boulder and met Elvis, talked to Elvis for quite a while. What a nice man, sincere, courteous. And uh, my dad invited him over for dinner. <laughs> I got, man, I got so shy. I said, Dad, you can't invite Elvis Presley over here. That's Elvis Presley. This is about 1956, guys. Wow. And, uh, yeah, man. And so, but he was so nice. He says, oh, sir, I, I really appreciate it. But my manager, Colonel Tom Parker, he told me I got to stand right here because I'm going to go back on for my second show in about 10 minutes. But I want to take a rain check on that. And uh, my dad said, okay. I just thought he was the grooviest guy. So uh, that got me going, that whole period there. And then I would hear Chuck Berry, you know, doing Johnny Be Good on the radio and uh, Bobby Blue Bland doing uh, Turn On Your Love Lights and stuff like that. I never dreamed that I would be backing them and being on the same shows with them, not soon after. And uh, as it turns out, Cass, well, man, some of the greatest stars. Here, I'll give you an example. He don't love like I love. If he did, he would break your heart. Do you know who that was? I don't. Tell me. I usually am good at this stuff. Well, you're a young man. Uh, this was before your time. This was in the 50s. It was an artist by the name of Jerry Butler. Okay, yeah. And the song was, He Don't Love You. And the lyrics, that's when I wanted to become a songwriter after I heard lyrics like, uh, Very well, the show's over. And the whole thing about his relationship with this woman that he loved was that uh, it turned, he, he, the composer framed it into uh, this guy, all he wants to do is break your heart. It's the last, uh, you know, this is the last part of the show and uh, you're going to get hurt. Man, I thought, wow, that's deep stuff. But then as time went by, you know, maybe uh, about a year went by, I got turned on to the British blues revolution that was coming. Eric Burden, the Yardbirds, uh, Eric Clapton, John Mayle and the Blues Breakers. Man, I heard that stuff and I said, now that's for me, man. I want to be a blues guitarist like Clapton and these other guys. And and uh, I knew that these songs that they were doing originally came from the Mississippi Delta, right. from pioneer artists, you know, like John Hooker, John Lee Hooker, and people like that. But man, the way they put them through Marshall amplifiers and cranked it up to 10 and, you know, did their spin on it. Again, little did I know I'd be playing with the Cream, with the Yardbirds, with Santana, with Led Zeppelin. 
I didn't know, you know, what was ahead of canned heat. I never forget when we played with the cream at our club in uh, Miami. It's called the Image. The cream was there, and that was the first time I ever heard a band being introduced by their names, their personal names first. Like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Eric Clapton, Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker, the cream. I went, wow. Whoa. That's the heaviest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, you know, I was just going through YouTube, yeah. looking up some stuff you did, and I saw this great thing was it's you and ted nugent just the two of you jamming on a guitar what what was that that i was watching yeah well what that was is that um we were doing a, a television show in miami to promote an upcoming concert with ted and the amboy dukes and then myself and uh, so it was just really a promo piece and the producer of that show said you know i don't i don't want the bands there ted doesn't have to bring the amboy dukes Mike Panera doesn't have to bring his band at that time, uh, Blues Image. And so he said, just just bring Panera and Nugent over and have them jam a little bit. And so uh, Ted and I had already met because the Blues Image, we had our own club. It was a re, you know, a reinvention of a, of a nightclub, like a Fillmore East kind of thing, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, it was called The Image. It was right there on Collins on the, on the beach. And uh, Ted had played there with the Amboy Duke, so I got to know him then. And I was Blues Image, our home club. We played with everybody, Grateful Dead, everybody. And so Ted and I became friends. And so I looked at him and and I said, "Hey, man, do you want you want to do a double guitar thing? You know, there's no no band or nothing, but I'm for it." He says, "Yeah, let's do it. What do you want to play?" I said, "Whatever you want to play, dude. Let's just uh, you know, let's just go for it. Tell me the key Where's and 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 we'll start playing." It, uh, on the side of the screen, you might be able to see yourself and Ted Nugent from that very video that's playing right now. <laughs> yeah, our, our there producer, it is. Our producer, Ben, just grabbed it from YouTube. He's fast like that. Way uh, yeah, to go, Ben. <laughs> there's Ted. There's Ted. So tell us how Blue's Image got started. I mean, obviously, we're going to talk about the hits and things like that. But but where, where did that come from and where did the name come from? Well, the Blue's Image came from the fact that I had started a band in Tampa called the motions the earth shaking motions great players jimmy amerson mark shimmery butch calkins and uh we were playing all around and uh going out of town too going to jacksonville and all that stuff and um when i got back to tampa i said man i just you know got to do something a little bit more than just doing like cover material and stuff we didn't have really any originals at that time and so I was going to school with Manny Bertamatti, who was a great drummer, and Joe Lala, who was a great uh, percussionist. And so I just said, look, you guys want to do a band, a blues band? And they said, yeah, let's do it. And uh, I always wanted to get back to Jimmy, Jimmy Amerson and Mark and everything. But I said, let me just try this first. And so I said, let me come up with a different name. So instead of the earth shaking motions, we now had the beginnings of the blues image. Wow. And... Um, and what was really great, Caswell, was that we had a bass player from Wales, and his name was Malcolm Jones, rest in peace. And uh, he had just gotten in from Wales, and he said, let me alert you guys to what's coming from England, man. Groups like the Yardbirds and John Mayle and the Blues Breakers and all this stuff. So if I were you, I would start playing blues and forget about cover material. So we, we did that gladly because all of us loved the blues. So we started working up blues tunes and doing the original arrangements. So like John Lee Hooker, I like the way you walk, the boom, 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 boom. And then, of course, you know, later came ZZ Top and all these groups playing that kind of uh, shuffle blues beat. But uh, we became Tampa's number one band at a little club called Dino's. And the blues image were playing obscure songs that people had never heard of. Yeah, but they really liked it. They really liked that thing. So while some bands in Tampa were doing, does your chewing up lose its flavor? On the bed poster, doing some great <laughs> tunes. We were doing, uh, don't dan at all. Do, 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 don't dan. With heavy, yeah, yeah. With heavy, heavy guitar and leads and all that. So we had Bobby Hoffman, Malcolm Jones, Joe Lala, Manny Bordamatti, Skip Conti on the keyboard, and myself. And that's how it started. But how it progressed was everybody kept telling us, 
hey, you know, you guys are great, man. You know what you should do? Go to Miami because you'll get discovered there. You'll never get discovered here in Tampa. And we said, sounds good to us. So we uh, found a gentleman who wanted to manage us, great guy, Hal Liggett. And we went to Miami and we started playing some of the clubs there. And uh, we played this one place called The World. And uh, it was huge. It was the biggest thing we've ever played. It was like a thousand people, two stories. The band played up on a balcony looking down at the people. And you had to make sure, you know, you didn't uh, 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 stare at the people too long because you start getting a little dizzy and you start backing up from the, right. edge of the, uh, the balcony. But we became very popular then. And then someone again came to us and said, hey, man, why don't you start your own club? You guys are very popular. You probably could pack it. And we said, OK. So we looked around to see if there were any clubs available. And there wasn't. But there was a bowling alley for rent, for lease on uh, Collins Avenue, right on the beach. And we said, hey, let's see if we can make some arrangements here. So we found a guy that owned a suntan company. Very nice man. Some hippies who were into uh, general contracting and stuff. They tore the place up, and pretty soon we had a 1,500-seat theater. What year uh, was this, Mike? What year? This is 1967. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the image opened up, and uh, we had uh, – oh, you wouldn't believe the bands that played there with us. I mean, the image, the home of Blues Image, opening night, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention with Blues Image. On to – Blood, Sweat, and Tears with David Clayton, Tem uh, David Clayton Thomas. Um, the uh, Grateful Dead, Jerry Garcia. We got to jam for hours, you know, just stream of consciousness stuff. The Cream, uh, uh, The Yardbirds with Jimmy Page. I got to wow. meet Jimmy, great guy. We became friends. And uh, it went on and on from there. Just all these great bands, even the McCoys with Rick Derringer doing hang on sloopy sloopy hang on and uh before you knew it um all these bands were especially eric burton said to me he says why don't you guys go to la man you can make it you get a record contract you guys are great you're original and you're underground and do it so there was a band called the blues project and we we modeled ourselves after them quite a bit al cooper on keyboards and uh danny katz a uh, bunch of great players and uh, they did sort of what we did. They rented a, uh, a place in Greenwich Village called the Cafe Agogo, and they stayed there all summer playing, and people would play with them. So now the Blues Image had their own club, and we were very popular, but we said, we're going to give it a try. We jumped in our station wagon with a U-Haul trailer, all our gear, and came out here to the West Coast, 1968. We, uh, and, did, and did you get a record contract right away, or how long did you have to work on it? Well, we had to work on it uh, for about, uh, about three or four months because what happened was we were very encouraged because it was Eric Burton who said, when you guys get to LA here, call me. He gave me his number and everything. He said, I'll help you get a record deal. I'll get you booked at like uh, one of the premier places like Whiskey or Go Go or something like that where you guys could get a deal. So I said, okay. So we went to Eric's uh, management office and uh, the manager said, his name was Kevin. And he said, listen, uh, Eric's not around. I'm going to listen. You got a song, you can play me a demo and then we'll see if you guys, uh, you know, are good enough to go play the Whiskey or Go-Go. I said, okay. So we had cut a little 45 single in Miami before we left called Can't You Believe in Forever. And so we uh, played that for him on a single and he got about halfway through the, through the song and said, Ugh, turn that off. He said, Whoa. you guys will never get signed with crap like that. We said, Oh, really? Oh, okay. And he says, so you can go ahead and leave now. So we were walking out the door and right at that moment, Eric Burden comes walking in. He says, Hey, you guys, I was hoping you'd get here and blah, blah, blah. As nice as could be. And he says, so how goes it? I said, well, your manager just kicked us out of here. He said, we don't have a chance to make it or get signed. He says, oh, yeah? Well, that's when we learned how the British, they managed their managers. The managers didn't tell the artists what to do. The artists would tell the manager what to do. And so he says, hey, man, get them a gig at the Whiskey A Go-Go right away if you know what's good for you. 
So he got us a gig at the Whiskey, and uh, it was great. We played uh, we played our hearts out, and uh, it just so happened that the bass player from Iron Butterfly, Lee Dorman, rest in peace, was there in the audience, and he said, man, you guys are terrific. Let me get my managers to come in and hear you, and he can probably get you signed. Okay. So it took, it took a, a few months for that whole process to happen. But sure enough, Atlantic Records came in. They heard us play. We did our regular blues stuff. Really nothing commercial or pop. And uh, they said, okay, we'll sign you. So they signed us. We did an album called Blues Image. And it was very progressive uh, underground blues with a touch of Latin. We had two drummers. And I got that from James Brown from having seen James back in Tampa at the armory and uh, Joe played percussion too. So in the middle of the set, after hearing two freight train drummer shuffles, he would jump over, get on a Latin percussion and play some extraordinary Latin jazz beats. And uh, man, we just sound like no, nobody else sounded like us. So we got signed and the first album, it's a blues album and Atlantic didn't like it. They said, we need some, something commercial. And we said, commercial? We don't do commercial. <laughs> don't even mention that word around. No, it wasn't that bad. But we, uh, we played with Santana. We played with Big Brother and the Holding Company, Grateful Dead, all these great bands from San Francisco. And then we got a place of our own again in Hollywood, California, this time called The Experience. And that was with our partner, Marshall. <laughs> And Jimi Hendrix started showing up several times a week to jam with us. Wow. And we became good friends. And, man, we jammed our hearts out. You know, he was, like, unbelievable. And so then, and he was so nice, he would always invite us to his house after the jams, about 2 in the morning. He gave me his Dobro guitar as a present, the one that he, that he used on all along the watchtower. And he said, here, take this, you know, you might like this. Wow. Whoa had that slide guitar sound. So Kaz, well, I'll tell you, that was now it's getting to be 1969 and the summer of love and all that stuff. And um, we started playing with our friends, Iron Butterfly, opening the show for them. In fact, sometimes I would be in both bands. After, uh, after uh, Butterfly let their guitar player go, Eric, who was very good, rest in peace again, uh, we started playing and we became friends with a butterfly and then the butterfly said hey we we need a guitar player our guitar player is leaving you want to come be part of butterfly and it came just in time because uh it was needed our band was just wiped out we were playing every night of the week touring and not making any money the managers were keeping it oh, uh saying that they were giving it to the record company you know to pay off the promotion and stuff like that and we said what promotion they gave us you know a few grand for uh, musical instruments, tour support, but where else? What? I mean, we've been playing now all summer and we don't have anything to show for it, which many bands, as you may know, of yes. the 60s, that's what happened to them. They were, they never made any money. They were too busy paying back the record company uh, expense tab. So that's what happened to us. And for me, I didn't mind, I didn't care. I was a bachelor, was living in a tent behind the house. We had a big band house and I liked it up there in the mountains but the band they had kids and, you know they they said you know we're wiped out man we can't keep going like this so, I knew so you was come so, to an end. so you were in iron butterfly at the same time you were in blues image yeah That's yeah that tra yeah the transition kind of it was like a slow dissolve rather than a hard cut <laughs> so so when did when did ride captain ride come about then you were doing both bands and then ride captain ride how did that song come about? Because obviously that's a huge hit for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But what happened was uh, I started playing with the Butterfly and uh, still had some uh, contracts and some things to uh, honor with uh, Blues Image and, and Atlantic. So um, we went in and uh, the producer, great producer, uh, his name was Richard Podler. And his studio was called American Recording Studios. He was producing Three Dog Night and Steppenwolf at the same time. You know, up and down the hallway, you could hear Three Dog Night in one room, Steppenwolf in the other, and Blues Image in the other. 
But the thing is, he laid some bad news on us. And he said, listen, Atlantic says, unless you can come up with a user-friendly, radio-friendly song, uh, pop commercial, they're going to have to let you go. Because blues is really not selling. And it's not getting airplay. And we said, wow, uh, don't know what to tell you. He says, well, it's got to be today. The way me today. He says, we're going to have to record something that I can send to the record company that shows that you've got a hit in the can. So I went into the bathroom. I was into meditation and I meditated a little bit, shut, shut my mind off. I came out and I, my keyboard player was there. Skip. Skip says, listen, I got a little thing. Maybe it might work, okay? It goes, ride, Captain, ride upon your mystery ship on your way to a world that doesn't matter this. I said, hey, that's that's cool. What else? He says, that's all I got. I said, uh-oh. So he had the chord structure somewhat, and he had that line, but that was it. So I had just come out of the meditation thing, and I sat down at a model number 73, Rhodes, Rhodes Piano, model 73, for 73 keys. And I sat down, I said, how am I going to start this song? What's What's the message? What's the story? And all of a sudden I heard, 73 then sailed up from the San Francisco Bay. It just came in. And I said, wow, this must be a song about a bunch of hippies in a big boat picking people up, saying, come on, we're going to a place where we can all laugh our lives away. The story started making sense to me. And uh, it was written within, I think I wrote it like in 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah, thanks to Skip having the basic track, you know. And we recorded it that afternoon. He called Atlantic and said, they did it. We've got a hit for you. Radio-friendly song called Ride, Captain Ride. So, Mike, would and you get would you, would you you play a little snippet of that maybe on your guitar? Oh, course? yeah. I would love to, love to. Here. Seven from the San Francisco Bay. Out of the ship, here what they have to say. We'll call it everyone around to another shore. We can laugh our lives away, and if we want more, rock, captain, rock, I'm not Thank for you. you. Now, t tell us, because we, we uh, believe it or not, we've been on the air for almost a half hour. The stories are great. T tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Alice Cooper and how you were in and for uh, 1980, 81, 82, I think you were there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, what happened was um, I had gone through a couple of solo albums that I did. Uh, the Iron Butterfly album, Metamorphosis and uh, Evolution and uh, Best of Iron Butterfly. Uh, now, uh, you know, I just finished my solo albums and I was just getting ready to go on the road to promote them and I get a call from Alice Cooper. And uh, basically it was, uh, you remember me? You, you and I played together back in the 60s. I said, yeah, sure, I remember you. He says, I don't know if you know this, but I'm pretty big now. I said, Alice, I know who you are. I know you're a huge star for sure. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, what can I help you with? He says, I want you to come be in a band and uh, play lead guitar. And uh, we're going to go out. We're going to do an album and, and possibly another one after that and go out and do two tours. I said, God, I would love to. I said, but you know what, Alice? I have a contractual and moral obligation to the record label that signed me, uh, uh, my solo album, to go out and promote that. So I've got to do that first. He said, I, somebody will call you back. I got a call back from management from Alice 
And they said, listen, Alice is willing to let you open the shows as Mike Panera with your band, the Mike Panera band. Now, mind you, you're going to be playing for 50,000 seat stadiums, you know, some big venues. You do your songs, promote your album, then go backstage, change your clothes and come back on with, that, with Alice in the Special Forces band. Wow. I said, wow. I mean, I mean, how great is that? And that's what we did. I, I would open sh- some of the shows as Mike Panera band and then come back on with Alice in the special forces. And then years later you formed the, uh, the classic rock all stars two two versions of which played for us here in Rhode Island, where I'm, where I'm coming out from. Um, how did you get involved with those guys? And, and how did you think about putting together a band where it's kind of like the Ringo star idea in a way? Yeah. Yeah. This was several years before Ringo did his thing. Uh, what happened, by the way, I love Rhode Island. Love it. And I love the shows you produced for us, man. You're, you're a great producer. Well, and thank you for your gracious hospitality. Uh, what happened was um, after, uh, after a couple of years, two albums with Alice, Zipper Catches Flesh and Special Forces, uh, Alice decided he needed a rest. And like many of us, he had been working nonstop. So we understood. He says, you know, maybe we'll get back together you know, later down the road, we understand. So I was sitting around and uh, I get a call from the producer of a show called 30 Years of Rock and Roll. In fact, it was called the 30th Anniversary of Rock and Roll. And he had Tiny Tim, Mickey Dolenz, Al Wilson, the Safaris, Cannibal and the Headhunters, all these great bands uh, were on about 10 bands, 10 artists. And Mickey Dolenz was my favorite. What, what a great guy. Well, it's hard to say he's my favorite. Everybody was great. But Mickey and I became good friends. And I always loved the monkeys. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm a believer, you know. So we started touring, and we did the 30th anniversary of rock and roll one summer. Then the next summer, we did it again. And this time, it was called 30 Years of Rock and Roll. And I liked the idea of having guys come up and do their hits backed by one band, which was Cannibal and Headhunters. So when that tour was over, I uh, called the guys that were in that tour that I had become close with and I had really admired, and that was Jerry Corbetta, the lead singer and founding member of Sugarloaf. Absolutely. Green-eyed lady, green-eyed lady. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and don't, don't call us, we'll call you. That's right, that's right. And uh, so, you know, um, we... Uh, I called Jerry. I said, what do you think? You want to do this? Like what we were doing in 30 years of rock and roll, except we're doing it in like a little four four or five piece band. He said, count me in, man. He said, the trouble we're going to have is finding a drummer who sang the hits. Because we didn't just want people that had been in bands, in big bands. We wanted the lead singer of the hits. So, yeah, Ringo wasn't available. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, the idea came to me, Pete was there. Of rare earth. Yeah. I just want to celebrate, get ready, losing you, born to wander. So many hits that they had and that Pete sang. So I called Pete and I said, you want to do it? He said, yeah, let's do it. So we formed the band. And uh, a friend of mine by the name of Wally Devlin helped me put that band together. And so our first show, Sarasota Fairgrounds in Sarasota, Florida, a benefit for muscular dystrophy. That was the first. No, 1992, and that was the first classic rock all-star show, and uh, it was on the radio, and it was being broadcast all over Florida that this new band, Classic Rock All-Stars, was appearing at the Sarasota Fairground. So Dickie Betts showed up. He heard that we were there, and he knew me, and um, Pat Mraz from Moody Blues and from Yes showed up. a bunch of people, a bunch of stars showed up and jammed with us that night. Oh, yeah. Brian Johnson of ACDC. This might have been before Brian, actually. This was the first guy. Yeah, I think so. I think this was the first deal. Here. And so we, uh, but what a great, great band. The classic rock all-stars. And at the end of the night, we had a big cast picture, everybody together. It looked like the who's who of rock and roll on there. And so that's how it started. So we started playing gigs. We became popular, started playing big arenas, big fairs and festivals and your shows, which we loved. And uh, 
then we decided to do a record, you know, do a, put it all on, uh, on an album. So we cut an album called The Hits and Nothing But The Hits. And it had, uh, you know, all these great songs from the band. Yeah. And uh, I asked uh, Spencer Davis to join the band. So he was in the band now. So we were doing Give Me Some Lovin', I'm a Man, all that stuff. And that went on the album, The Hits and Nothing But The Hits by the Classic Rock All-Stars. So we, uh, we went on from there to just get bigger and bigger. And I guess you know, you know, Jerry Corbett had passed away. Uh, you know, he, he was uh, not well there and, uh, towards the end, you know, 2010, 2012. And uh, I wasn't doing so good either. Uh, I had contracted sepsis, which, if you're not careful, can freeze up every organ in your body. I was blessed that uh, the right doctor knew the right uh, way to cure it. So <clears throat> I, uh, after that was done, I went back to the band and uh, Jerry fell sick. And, uh, well, uh, Pete, after he got sick, you know, Pete said, you know, we might want to think about putting together some different guys here because uh, Dennis is not doing too well. Jerry's not doing too well. And he was right. When in a short period of time, Dennis Noda had passed away. Jerry Corbetta had passed away. And so we, it was just me and him, me and Pete. And so Pete said, you know what, Mike, I'm going to try going solo. And I'm tired of all the big, you know, arena shows. I want to do like some bongos and congas and play my hits with just a, a bass player, a stand-up bass, like a jazz thing. I said, I don't believe you. Let's do it. So he did that, and I went my way, and uh, that was it. The next thing that happened was Classic Rock All-Stars, that version, which was version one, had disappeared, but we were so in demand. People were constantly calling us and saying, we want you guys. We want you. We want Classic Rock All-Stars. So I put together a band with Goldie McJohn of Steppenwolf, keyboard player, found one of the founding members. And then um, uh, on bass, we had none other than Prescott Niles. From the Knack. From the Knack. Yeah. And then on drums, Albert Burchard from Blue Oyster Cult. And that was it. That was uh, good stuff. the second version. So that went on for a while. And then Goldie passed away too. God rest his soul. And uh, so that disbanded. And now I'm here with a new classic rock all-stars that uh, you can find. I don't know if you've seen the link, but it goes to um, Jeff Plain with uh, members of War, El Chicano, uh, Paul McCartney's band, uh, Oingo Boingo, myself from Blues Image and Iron Butterfly. And uh, it's a great band. We play together. And also I play as Mike Panera, the Mike Panera Experience, the Repeat Power Trio. So just working away, loving it, writing new songs, and talking to good friends like yourself. So, Mike, uh, no, no retirement plans for you in the near future? No, not at That's all. That's good. That's good. You just want to keep rocking. I want to keep rocking. My phone says it's about to die from the, the battery. And you've been it's, with us for a long time, so do us a favor. Uh, yeah. play, play, play us anything you like to, to end the show with. You pick a tune. Oh, Okay. Well, let's see. How about? Or not. <laughs> what an amazing time to freeze. Well, that's all right. He was with us for a long time. Oh, my Mike, God. Oh, that's all right. Thank you so much, Mike. I'm going to I'm going to try once to see if that. No. All right. Well, while, while well, you, I have well, it. While I have it, let's put up this great picture of you guys together. Oh, yeah. That was when Mike – so Mike visited us two times uh, with the Classic Rock All-Stars with both lineups he mentioned. Um, and uh, he came down to Seafood Haven, and we had a great time. And then with the one version of the Classic Rock All-Stars with um, uh, the guy from the Knack, Prescott Niles on bass, they invited me up to sing my Sharona with them. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. Like, how am I <laughs> – it was, it was a blast. So Mike was on guitar. Goldie from Steppenwolf was on the keyboards, the guy, the actual bass player from the Knack and the drummer from Blue Ice Girl, and I'm singing, ooh, my little pretty one. <laughs> and uh, now we can sing my Corona. That's um, awesome. Uh, all right, Caswell. Well, um, I'm out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're, oh.
It's my wife. Happy birthday to my husband, Caswell. So for those who don't know, today, April 14th, is his 46th birthday, and he has been entertaining us uh, now for four weeks, five weeks, I think. Something like that. And uh, also, by the way, today is the day that the Titanic hit the iceberg, and it was also my mother's birthday. She would have been 79 today. So um, I just wanted to introduce uh, Ben Barber, um, who is a wonderful friend. Not only is the producer of the show, but he's a wonderful friend of ours. Had a wonderful idea today, uh, and we thought we would um, pay tribute to Caswell on his birthday. So take it away, Ben. Hi, Caswell. How Hi. are you doing? Hi, Caswell. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We love you very much, and you're the best son a parent could have. Yeah. And Pixie's saying hello. She's peeking there yeah. in between John. We wish you could. we could be with you guys. Yeah. And, uh, Hopefully so. we'll be together soon. Happy birthday. Peace and love. Peace yep. and love. We love you very All right. much. All right. Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. People are saying it's your birthday. Frankly, no one saw a birthday like this coming. This is probably the best birthday in the history of mankind. It's going to be a tremendous birthday, a big birthday, really, really big. Have a big birthday, Caswell Cook. Hey, happy birthday, Caswell. I'm just hanging out here in my room, you know, with my uh, my machine and checking on some trains and stuff. Anyways, uh, happy birthday, and uh, hopefully uh, after all this crap is over with this corona stuff, we'll... Uh, We'll be down at the beach and hanging out. Take care. Bye. Forty-six. <laughs> That's four away from fifty. That's all right. Wait, I'm forty-six too. Caswell, have a great birthday, man. Enjoy your quarantine birthday with the family. And hey, forty-six more coming up. Have a great day. Happy birthday, Caswell. Hope you get a half a dozen clam cake. <laughs> Happy birthday, Caswell. Hey, Caz, me, Sky B, your partner. Uh, enjoy your day. Crazy times. I took my mask off for a minute so you know who's talking to you. All right. God bless. Be safe. Hey, Caswell. It's Jay Quellen from the Christchurch office. I wish you a wonderful birthday, staying at home with your family and safe. Hello, Caswell. I just want to let you know it's been nice having you part of the family and uh, I've written you a poem for your birthday they say it's your birthday <laughs> it's my birthday too yeah they say it's your birthday we're gonna have a good time <laughs> I'm glad it's your birthday happy birthday to you original <laughs> that was funny i didn't even know you put that together that was pretty good Wait, when did you guys That's do ben, that is brent ben's brainchild i just uh helped corral the folks so we had a coconut kevin we had a brother lou on his pacemaker we had a, a jay quellen we had a duncan darren a lot of uh, thanking you people there that's very nice thank you for doing that i've never had a, a video uh a video a birthday to me. I always make videos for the other people. So that exactly. was nice. Exactly, Mondo. That was the point. I don't know where I'm looking, by the way. The, the, the camera is, I have no idea, but. Look at me. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ben That's what will it's teach all about. me someday. Yes. Well, thank you very much. That was a nice birthday. I got sung happy birthday by Mike Panera. And when he came on, I don't know how he knew it was my birthday. I got a nice video surprise from all you people. And so thank you to all the people who made that who made that uh, nice video there. Peace and love. My mother and John and the dog, one of the dogs. That was very good. I really like that. Thank you very much for doing that. Ben's a Ben rock, so that's all I can say. Well, that's good stuff. Anything else you want to uh, uh, say on this uh, lovely show? Uh, nothing else for me other than the fact that... Um, you were born on an Easter Sunday, which says a lot about you, you know? 
your personality. And we actually got the story of your birth from your mom earlier today, which was very nice. I wish we had captured that on audio, but so. Well, she's still alive, so she you could do that. Yeah, you we, could, we you should could, probably do that. <laughs> you could video her. You got a lot of information out of her, so that was good. I, like I think that. we threw you off tonight, Kaz. You did. Good. Uh, You're I not probably... always in control. No, that's all right. I probably should wrap it up now, or what am I supposed to do? I... Ben, <laughs> hello. <laughs> what am I? What am I? What am I supposed Hi, to ben. do now, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> wrap up the show, man. I did. Unfortunately, during the um, during the video, uh, Mike popped back up, but I didn't want to pop him in real quick, and then he left again. So oh, that's I all felt, right. I felt really. Bad. I sent him a text that said, "I'm so sorry. If you want to come back, uh, you know, you can and play us off." But um, you know, he was he he gave us about 40 minutes, which was amazing and and wonderful stories. Oh well, yeah, so. I was gonna say yeah, and hearing Ride Captain Ride from the guy who actually sang it is pretty good too. I like yeah. that. That's good stuff for sure. Well, and then and then my wife popped up on the screen. Surprise me. She's upstairs. I'm down here see, in the basement. Did you see her name pop up in the chat? earlier she said happy birthday no oh, no blew, no no I blew, I blew it and ben was ben was very stealth so <laughs> she put there's a private chat for the people in the studio oh and she, put, she put hi ben and it says christine cook and i was like no she, he's like no no he Spring can see yard. that yeah so. oh caswell left all right christine ben, you you're had, the best christine end the show all right, guys, uh, signing off. Caswell Cook's birthday, and I don't know when his next show is, but thanks for tuning in. Have a good night, everyone. Come on, you know how he ends it. Do it. Good night, everyone. Do it. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. I might be too young to Ca know what you're Caswell, talking about. Caswell, just do it. She did. Oh, my God. Caswell, she's not doing the thing. I tried to get her. I tried to pitch to her to do your in, to do your ending since you went off. And oh, she I don't didn't do, the do prayer. it. Go no, ahead, not Caswell. The, just good night, everyone. Good night, mom. Oh, good night, mom. Uh, <laughs> am I supposed? I don't even know what's going on at this point. I'm. I'm just end the damn am I show. To be talking. End the damn show. Oh, okay. So, all right, I'll I'll end the show now. All right, so. I'm going to end with a prayer. So. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend to the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Thank you all for a great birthday. I was really, it was amazing to see all the um, the birthday wishes on social media today. There was like, I don't know, like 400 and something. I, don't, I didn't know I knew that many people. And for all of you tonight who uh, have said happy birthday, and to my guest, Mike Panera from Blues Image and Iron Butterfly, who actually sang happy birthday. And then, of course, to my wife, who very secretly, um, by the way, she got us Kenny Loggins tickets. So we're going to go see Kenny when this coronavirus is over which is going to be very cool. Thank you for that. And then uh, her and Ben put together this video with all my closest friends and family. So that was really cool. So thank you all very much for watching this show every night. I don't know who my guest is tomorrow night. Uh, we'll figure it out, though. <laughs> so good night, everybody. Good night, Mom. Love you, too. <laughs>